our kids sometimes learn just like we do in the valleys, that can allow us to watch them go through a hard time and say, all right, maybe God is using this season to bring them to that ultimate destination, that saving relationship with Him, that place where God really is glorified in their life. Welcome to the Focus on the Family broadcast, helping families thrive. Today we're going to talk with Jody Burnt, and her husband Robbie is in the audience, so we're going to validate everything you say, Jody. That's perfect. <laughs> we right want a thumbs head. up or a thumbs down, <laughs> but uh, she has written a wonderful book, Praying the Scriptures for Your Adult Children, and I don't know if there was a, a previous one, Praying for Your Toddlers, but you yeah. might want to come out with that one soon. We have Praying the Scriptures for Your Children. Yes. That came out in 2001, and then uh, our kids got a little older, and they began dating and <laughs> right. driving, and they got Praying the Scriptures for Your Teens, Yes. and then, you know, we have four children, and they're all adults or launching into adults, and I realized... I still needed to pray. They still needed <laughs> jobs mm-hmm. and places to live. And so came out with praying the scriptures for your adult children. Well, it's so good to have you here, Focus on the Family. Thank officially you. welcome. Oh, it's officially a delight <laughs> to be here. Thank you so much. And you're coming in from Virginia Beach, one of our favorite places. That's such a great area of the country. It's a wonderful area, but I'll tell you, so is this place. You've uh, touched on this. I mean, prayers do change, don't they? And yes. John and I were laughing about it, but it's so true. And you've experienced it. You've written about it. Um, what's happening there as your kids mature? You're right. They do change. And the issues are always significant when you're the parent, when it's your child. I, when I wrote Praying the Scriptures for Your Children, I remember interviewing a mom who was very concerned because her six-year-old had been caught swiping crayons out of the Sunday school supply cabinet. And, you know, you giggle about that, but, but she was concerned as we would be if our child she thought it was like, a perhaps a you know a sign a of prime breeze <laughs> to come no yeah but you kind of hope that's a whoopsie when they're six but then as I was doing the adult children book I talked with parents whose kids were really in some more established patterns you Correct. know and and whether it was um, knowing how to manage their money or use their time or find a job or some of the trickier issues of addictions uh, pornography Uh, marital troubles, you know, a lot of parents are looking at their kids and just seeing some stress there. Um, And those things weigh heavier. We say little people, little problems, big people, big problems. And Mm, there's some truth to that. Now, in the book, you refer to this parenting phase, which, again, I'm just about to experience. (laughs) So you're teaching me along with probably thousands of others right now that have teenagers in the home still. But you kind of compare adult children to playing whack-a-mole. Now, I I feel like teenage years are kind of whack-a-mole. I think whack-a-mole could be at any phase. If if you have more than one child, you're playing whack-a-mole because as soon as you get, you know, one where you think, okay, we're squared away, we're on a good path, you know, another issue pops up and you just spend your life whack-a-mole, but it's okay. (laughs) Now, in that regard, you know, you think of the perfect parent. Oh, who is that? God himself. Okay, yeah, that's good. So he had two children, (laughs) and he seemed to have to play whack-a-mole as well when it came to Adam and Eve. I mean, describe that. All of us. You talk about the formula. The the Lord had it. He knew what was right for them, Hmm. and they disobeyed him. And it's kind of the pattern when you're a parent. You do feel a little more sense of where God was at, I think, with Adam and Eve and humanity. But, you know, we get so much encouragement from the Lord and his parenting because, sure, just like Adam and Eve, we all stray and our kids stray, and yet we see God's limitless love and that nothing we do can ever diminish that love for us. And I try to draw, you know, inspiration and strength for that as I parent my own children saying, hey, don't be surprised when they take a walk on the wild side and make a step here or there. We all do. I want to move it that way because that's where the nitty gritty is. Mm. Uh, parents, you know, we have limited control and influence. I mm. don't know that we realize that. I right. think we come out of an, a period when they're small that you do have a lot of influence mm-hmm. and control. Yeah. And then you want to exert that at 13, 14, 15, right when they're trying to move Right. away from that control, right. Right. describe that lack well, of influence. I love, actually, a friend sent me a poem just this week, and she said, um, I won't quote the poem right, but the gist of it was, when you were little, I um, touched you and I covered you with a blanket, tucking you in. Now you're grown, you're out of my reach, and I'm covering you with my prayers. That's a good And thing. I just loved that image because... If our kids are still in the home, they may still be out of our reach emotionally, psychologically. They might not want to hear what we have to say. And then they're older, they might be physically out of our reach, but they're never out of God's reach. And I love that he invites us to partner with him. You know, he, we know he's sovereign. He's got good plans, good purposes, 
but he wants us involved, and the way he invites us to partner with him is through prayer. Yeah, I'm thinking of some parents, not that uh, I would ever do this, but you pray <laughs> about tucking in and all that. Right. Then when they're teenagers, you're praying for that opportunity to lecture. Lord, give me that chance to really lay it <laughs> down for him. <laughs> and uh, I want to get to that part at some point, but uh, because it is so uh, easy for us to say, hey, this is the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. Can't you see it? Why don't right. you see it? Right. And you know, sometimes, don't you think God says that to us? <laughs> oh, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, yes, yes. But I just, you know, I love what um, my friend Jeannie Cunyon, I think she's been a guest on your show. She wrote Mom Set Free. And she has a line. She says, we are significant in our children's lives, but we're not sovereign. And, you know, as parents, we beat ourselves up thinking, oh, I missed this opportunity. I didn't do this right. Or we might pat ourselves on the back of our kids do something well and we think yay Mm -hmm. us but in neither case do we deserve the blame or the credit our kids are individual people just like we are and they're going to make their own choices and we can be significant we can pray we can counsel we can as you say pray for the opportunities for our kids to listen to us Um, but doesn't always happen but we can't carry that burden yeah it's so true Uh, you mentioned something that I think is really helpful so if you're in a position to write this one down or dictate it this is this is going to be a bit of the advice we really want you to see (laughs) or you can just get the download you mentioned the five A's for oh, prayer. Gosh. You're so nice to say I mentioned that, but it's actually a ripoff from an author named Jean Fleming. I quoted her in the uh, children book, and then I loved it so much, and I needed it again for the adult book. The five A's are acknowledging God's hand on their lives, admitting any areas where we resent how God created our children, which, you know, we all have those things, except oh, well, God... Slow down. Oh, slow down. Say that one again. I, right. I've never heard it quite that way. The admit? Yes. Yeah. This is well, convicting. Again, this isn't me. This is Jean Fleming. Admit any areas where we resent how God created our children. Wow. And I think we need to go before the Lord sometimes and say, you knew what you were doing, and I don't know. Um, I got to get with your program. But then she says, accept God's design for each child. Thank him for how they're made affirm his purpose in creating our children for his glory. I love that. Mm -hmm. Because you can look at it and you can say, well, I don't know about that character trait. My child's too shy. My child's too outgoing. You know, whatever it is. And you say, no, you know what? I'm going to affirm that God made him that way. Psalm 139, he knows how we're formed. And then finally, the fifth A is to ally, ally ourselves with God's plan for their lives. Say, I want to get on your program, Mm -hmm. God. You know, Jody, what it strikes me hearing it in that context, how prayer becomes almost an, an antidote to your worry, to your oh, fears, gosh. to yes. your control. Absolutely. If you can actually pray this Absolutely. way, it relaxes you in the relationship 100%. in a very positive way. Yes, I think that for parents, at least for me, and I would imagine for a lot of your listeners, when we find out something's not right, going wrong, whether it's the six-year-old swiping the, you know, crayons or the 16-year-old experimenting with substance abuse, the 28-year-old falling out of his job, whatever. Our default position can often be worry or fear or even anger. You know, why are you doing that? Those are all good Christian attributes. Thank you. (laughs) Well, but I think God would say, you know what? Let me just tell you, I'm cluing you in. I'm letting you see what's going on in your child's life because guess what? I've got plans and purposes, and they're good, and I want to work with you. I want to invite you into this partnership with me so that we can, you can pray, and I can answer, and we can work in your child's life. So instead of fear and worry, yeah. our default position should be prayer and trust. It's not for me all the time, but I'm trying to get there. You know, and I, I need to ask this question now. I, oh. I know we're going to cover more of this later, but the woman, particularly the mom, yeah. who really struggles with that fear and control— And maybe they still have teenagers in the home, Mm -hmm. or maybe they're just launched and they're out on their own now. But that fear and that control and that, how how do you, as a a mom particularly, Jody, how do you pull back from that? Did you have Mm. this kind of, hey, it's in God's hands attitude the whole time? Or um, with friends that, that, that you may know. That sounds kind of laissez-faire, the whole it's in God's hands. Well, I speak not, to that, yeah, that kind of yeah. thing. I didn't have that. I will tell you, though, there were times with our children when I would get too weary or too discouraged to pray. I would think we've been walking through this particular season for a long time. I'm not seeing the needle moving. 
should I just, like I told a story last night, I was speaking to a group, I said to our son, there was a season when I just wanted to buy him a pack of cigarettes, put him out on the street corner, because I thought, that's going to save us all a lot of worry, he's going to wind up there anyway, let go. And yet, <laughs> We do not advise that. No, I, w- I wouldn't either, but, that, but I share that to just show kind of that's how I yeah, felt. You were, I was yeah. discouraged. And that's where I think you mentioned the community of parents. I, I was part of a moms in prayer group, and those women stepped into the gap for me. They said, you know, we'll take that up. We will pray for your son. And they did that for our girls too and other things. And I did that for them because kind of like, you know, the story Moses when the Israelites are fighting down in the valley and Aaron and her have to come alongside and hold up his hands because when his hands are up, the Israelites are winning. And when they fall down, they are losing the battle. And so the other guys come along and they hold up his hands Mm -hmm. and the victory comes. And I think that we need that with these other friends, prayer partners, and they don't even have to be your your social best friend. They don't even have to be just like you, but someone who will lift up your children. Um, And that's getting back to your point of the community. One of the reasons I did a study guide for the adult children book, it's available free download on my website at jodyburnt.com. And one of the reasons I did that is I wanted to give parents a resource to say, I'm going to grab a friend or two, and I'm going to go through some of these prayer needs, work through the scriptures together so that I can support my friend and her children and she can do that for me. So yeah. I think we really need that. Well, it's so good. And I think it helps to relax the fearful heart. Yes. I mean, that's, yes. I think, the key benefit. Yes. You learn that others are struggling mm-hmm. through those kind of right. difficulties. And Maybe they can reorient more you. Severe. You know, they can, they can say, hey, let's do a little perspective change. Mm-hmm. Let's get God's word in there. Mm-hmm. And I hope our conversation with Joni Burnt today on Focus on the Family is offering a little bit of that reorientation about the perspective of what you're dealing with uh, with your adult children. Uh, The book we're talking about is Praying the Scriptures for Your Adult Children, Trusting God with the Ones You Love. We've got that available at our website, focusonthefamily.com slash broadcast, or call 800, the letter A in the word family, and we can tell you more. Jody, uh, let's get to it. Describe um, what a prayer blessing sounds like for our adult children. Okay, Um, I love that you say prayer blessing because... One of the things I think people who have adult children sometimes face is, um, I'm not sure I like the choice my child has made. You know, kids don't come to adulthood the same way we do, all those traditional markers of go to school, get a job, find a place to rent, find someone to marry, get a home. You know, all the, they do things differently, out of order. They skip some steps. They make choices that we might not always agree with. And yet, as we pray for our kids, I think we can also bless them. We don't have to agree with everything they're doing to say, I bless you, right. you know, and pull some of those blessings out of scripture. Our family loves the number six one. May the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine on you. And there's so many others. I do a whole chapter on blessing, but um, because a blessing is not the same thing as an endorsement. Yes. You know, it's not saying get on you, Roger that way to go. And you know, your life a sin. It's not that. It's just saying I'm forecasting God's favor over your life. Yeah. I'm speaking favor over your life. I'm opening the door so God can work these blessings and provide them in your life. Mm. Now, speak to that mom or even that dad who mm-hmm. has that child that in their heart of hearts, they're worried. And sure. there's evidence sure. for being worried. It's not flippant. It's not mm. that there's a personality conflict. Yeah. Yeah. It's because the crayon stealing that you talked right. about in that one right. example has now become more severe. they yes in a bad place. They're in a dark place. Maybe they don't want to go to church. And, you know, the more severe issues, how does a parent overcome the obvious and still pray in a positive way? Well, I love that question because it really gets to the heart of what this is all about. And as I interviewed parents for the book and hearing their stories, there were a lot of folks whose kids were walking a very tough road. Mm -hmm. Um, Sexual sin, Uh, faith crisis, walking away, prodigal children, all of that. And these parents cried out to the Lord. And it was very interesting because it was almost like, you know, I could have put them in a soundproof booth where they didn't know what each other was saying. But a refrain that I heard over and over again was as they took those fears and those worries to God and said, what do I do? What they felt like the Lord said to them was, love them. Love your kids. Yeah. They know what they're doing is wrong. You've spent you know, years lecturing them, teaching them, trying to plant God's word and his commands. They know. You don't have to remind them of that. You've got to love them and pray for them hmm. and trust me to work in their lives. The prayer verse I have hung on to in my adult children parenting more than any other is Philippians 2.13. And that's where uh, Paul says that it's God who works in us to will and to act 
according to his good purpose. The NLT translation, New Living, I think, says God energizes us to do and desire that which pleases him. Hmm. And I've prayed that. I've said, Lord, my kids are doing this or that. It's not lining up with what I think is your best plan. So would you energize them yeah. to do and desire that yeah. which would please you? You know, and it, this is the right thing. You're saying the right things. You're living the right things in that regard. I, I believe in the book you share a story about a friend who maybe is part of that group you're referring to, but they were living what I would say is a real-world example where their daughter was cohabiting with a yeah. boyfriend. Yeah. Yeah. And that, um, here's a shocker to all our Christian parents. That is a normal issue now. We hear about that here at Focus oh, on the Family. 100%. I had people read the book and say, wait a minute, um, aren't you worried you're going to offend readers? Because everybody is cohabitating now, and and that's wrong. you know. And, and I had to think, well, you know, my understanding of Scripture is right. sex I mean, outside it, of marriage is not a happy thing. Well, and, and that <laughs> so. proves the point that we as parents are having to even teach at that level that something's so fundamental... Right. That yeah. we think is understood, yeah. right? But but speak to this friend's experience because I think it helps. Oh, I just to prove I absolutely love this sweet mom. She was so vulnerable and willing to share her own heart, because she said she was praying and praying and saying, um, "God, convict them, let them know what they're doing is wrong. You know, show them, show them from your word. Bring people into their lives to tell them that's not your best plan." On and on, you know, prayer warrior mom, and which she, is a natural response. Well, May I defend that? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> but I'll tell you, the Holy Spirit spoke to her and just said. Stop. Yeah. They know that. Why don't you pray, Mom, that they would see my love? You know, Romans tells us God's kindness leads us to repentance. And so for her, that was like an exhale. That was like an ability to let go and just say to the Lord. Yeah. Um, let, me, let me go deeper with that because this is a topic for me that really, mm -hmm. in the parenting area particularly, I'm trying to communicate consistently, whether the book, A Good Dad, I wrote or others. Right. And I get criticized for this, but it's this idea that God actually is in control <laughs> and that you got to, yeah. in some ways you have to relax. Yeah. I guess it's a boundary question right. I'm asking you. Right. When is it laissez-faire, yeah. as you referred to it earlier, right. where you're too passive? Right. And where, where's that healthy line to say, you know what, we need to accept that God mm -hmm. is shaping our child. And I would suggest for all of us worried parents that oftentimes um, children, even adult children, are shaped in the valleys, not on the mountaintops. I know Amen. that's true of my own life. Amen. Mm -hmm. I learned more when I was sure. hurting than sure. I learned when I was on the mountaintop yeah. dancing. Yes. You seem not to have an open ear at that point. No, but you're when right. you're crushed, like the scripture says, he's close to the brokenhearted, mm -hmm. saves those who are right. crushed. Right. Um, you, you speak to that issue and how we need yeah. to have a little more confidence as parents that it's okay for our kids to be in a valley. It is okay for them to be in a valley. I wish I had a secret formula for knowing, you know, when to step in and when to sort of step back. Mm -hmm. I don't know the answer to that other than maybe to look at the motivation. You know, are you trying to correct a child's behavior because you think it reflects on your parenting? Mm -hmm. Are you trying to um, bring glory to God in and through their lives? Is and there a quick test for that where you <laughs> could <laughs> say, okay, which one is it, yeah, Lord? You know, I think it's probably answer, the former most of the time. Answer right? these really three is. questions really, and you'll know. It would know. be so good. It would be such a good Good test. But yeah, so I think, you know, some of it we have to examine our own hearts of what are we trying to accomplish here. Um, but then keep going back, keep going back to the Lord to just say, you know, I trusted you with this uh, yesterday, um, but I'm going to have to trust you with this again today. And that was a great thing God taught me when I thought I was trusting him and outcomes were not happening like I desired. And I kind of took that up with him. I said, what the heck? This child is doing this. This is doing, child's doing that. And that's not what I prayed and not what I thought you would promise. And God said, you're not trusting in me. You're trusting in an agenda. You're trusting in an outcome. And I had to really step back and go, oh, he's right. Yeah. So I need to um, re-examine my heart and say, what am I looking for, a result or a relationship? You said earlier, his presence in the valleys. And if his presence are with our kids in that dark place, what a blessing. Yeah. You know, he's going to be wooing them. I think it's that way a lot of times with prayer, too. Yeah. And I share the story of praying for our son when he was young. Um, that I had to pray over, I, I picked it in, um, every December we pick a prayer verse for our children for the year, for the coming year, um, what I think God might want to do in their lives. And that year, I don't know, he was maybe five or six, I picked Proverbs 23, mm -hmm. verses 23 and 24, and I prayed, Father, help Robbie get wisdom 
discipline, and understanding. Let him be the righteous man who brings joy to his parents, the wise son in whom we delight. And I'll tell you, God didn't answer that the next day or even the next week. But over the course of that year and then in the years following, we saw a shaping take place. And it wasn't a spotless journey. He got ejected from a lacrosse game as a nine-year-old, you know. But as I look at him now as a 22-year-old young man, I see composure. I see wisdom. Mm -hmm. I see self-discipline. It's not perfect, but God's done that. Mm. Jody, what, what do you think about that prayer was special to the Lord. Why, why did, how did God process? Oh, I'll tell you, prayer? I think what is special about that prayer and any prayer that's rooted in God's word is that when we take the words first breathed by the Father, this is why I love praying the scriptures. I mean, we can pray anything. We can say, God, help me. I told a story about that last night when I was speaking, and, and I know King David, you know, help me, Lord. That's fine. <laughs> fine prayer. But I love tapping into God's word. I mean, Jesus says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. And that's not a name it, claim it. That's not a guarantee slap a Bible verse on something and God has to do it. That is more, I think, what the Lord is saying is, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, if they shape how you think, how you process things, if they uh, uh, transform your perspective, mm -hmm. your desires, your desires for your children, your prayers will begin to line up with what God already wants to do. God wanted Robbie to have wisdom and discipline and understanding. He wanted him to be a son who brought delight to his parents. I didn't invent that. I just prayed back the words he gave us to begin with in Scripture. I like that. Yeah, it's I like so it true. too. God's so good. Yeah. He knows all our needs and provides for all of them. That was the thing when I started writing the first book. I surveyed parents to find out their needs, and I got all kinds of answers back. I want kids to be wise. I want them to have good friendships. I want them to be protected from harm. I want salvation. I want them to find the right marriage partner, whatever. And I used those verses to shape the table of contents for the book. And as I dug around in the Bible, what was so cool was I realized there's a verse for everything. There's nothing we can think of or pray about that he hadn't already provided for. And in that context, how do you maintain patience as a parent? I mean, because <laughs> yeah. you'll see one thing yeah. happen. Okay, right. that's good. That gives right. you a little buoyancy. Sure. you got four of the things that aren't quite there yet, yeah. and you, you yeah. continue to worry. Uh, so yeah. how do you say, Lord, I'm going to hand this worry over to you, and I'm not going to yeah. live in this place of fear? Well, I say that. And then I say it again 10 minutes later. Okay, I mean, <laughs> good. So you're like I mean, you're reminding yeah, yourself. Yeah, I, I'm which reminding is good. myself. And I'll tell you, the more we tell ourselves and remind ourselves that God isn't forgetful, he's not late, his timing is perfect, and even if it doesn't line up with our timetable or our agenda, we really can trust, believe it or not, that his is better. Mm -hmm. And I've learned that often the hard way, but that's yeah. where I have to keep going back and saying, I don't understand this timetable, but I trust you. Mm. Jody, I was really intrigued by the distinction you make between destination prayers, which to me is well, we're going to Disneyland, we got a problem, <laughs> sure. versus process prayers. How do we get ready to go to Disneyland? Uh, what's the difference in those two prayer types? Well, I think it's really helpful as we pray for our kids to, um, yes, realize that there are going to be day in, day out issues they face, you know, are they going to make this team, get cut from this team, get into this college, not, you know, marry this person, not. But we want to look at and pray with the ultimate destination in mind, that God would be glorified and that our children would have a saving relationship with him. Third John, and I think verse four says, I have no greater joy than that my children are walking in the truth. And as parents, if we wrap our joy up in an earthly success or a temporal victory, that's okay, but it's not going to give us the peace and the lasting satisfaction as if we know our children are walking in the truth. So if we keep that destination in mind, I think we can pray. And like you said, our kids sometimes learn just like we do in the valleys. That can allow us to watch them go through a hard time and say, all right, maybe God is using this season to bring them to that ultimate destination, that saving relationship with him, that place where God really is glorified in their life. And it might not be a fun walk the whole way, mm -hmm. but destination keeps us able to trust, I think, and keeps us able to have joy even when things aren't looking exactly like we would design or desire. Mm -hmm. Jody, this has been great. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Ben, such a treat to be here. Lord bless you all. Thank you.
Hey, I'm John Fuller, and thanks for watching. Get more info about Focus over here and more from our guests over there, and be sure to subscribe to our channel as well.